right, guys, we're going to get started in just a moment here. But somebody isn't going to let me practice, so roommates are on puppy patrol. Can you say hi? Who's that? Yeah, okay. Can you leave? Sorry. <laughs> okay, you're going to be good and let me have an hour. Okay, let's go. Okay, we'll be right back. Go see boys, dad. All right, welcome everyone. Um, hopefully you saw my post just before this. Uh, we're gonna use a couple of fun props today. So if you don't, don't worry, we can use our yoga mats, we'll make it work. Um, but yeah, welcome to your hips practice. Okay, so let's get started in child's pose. Okay. So begin to bring the big toe edges of your feet together, knees wide. Walk your fingertips forward and then just allow your forehead to rest heavy onto your mat. And begin to carve out a little bit of space to just simply land here. Okay, so in child's pose, it might feel a little bit sticky the first few times that you come into this, um, especially if you've kind of spent your morning at your computer or if you haven't quite moved yet. So don't feel like you have to land in the pose and just stay as you are. That you might need to take a couple of shifts. Maybe you rock your forehead side to side a couple of times. You might even walk your fingertips further and then play the slide your shoulders down your back. Or you can allow your hips to come a little bit closer towards your heels. And as you just begin to settle into your body, notice anywhere that feels sticky, anywhere that maybe is a little bit um, stubborn today, it feels like it doesn't want to move. And can you imagine that you're just sending your breath there? Okay, so your breath won't actually move to your toes, but that the intention of the breath. So as you inhale, feel your rib cage expand outwards, like you're growing so much bigger. And then as you exhale, it's a softening back through center, just like you're gathering yourself inwards. Okay. So inhales will expand and open, and exhales to soften. And especially in child's pose, bring your attention to your low back and imagine that where those two dimples would land, or you can even feel it if you take your hands to your low back, those two little knobs. As you inhale, allow your breath to travel all the way down your spine, and then expand to the left and right as you come to the low back, and as you exhale, that those two places begin to draw in towards one another. Hips might sink down a little bit further. Okay, let's just take one more breath as you are. And then peel yourself away from your mat, slowly rounding through the spine. Slide your hands underneath your shoulders. Walk your knees underneath your hips. Like a dog wagging its tail, send your hips over to the right, look over your left shoulder, drop your right hip towards the ground, and then as you inhale, lift back up through center, and then drop your left hip towards the ground, gaze over your right shoulder. And just take that a couple more times, playing with your own depth, just beginning to bring some sensation into the hips, a little bit of movement. All right. The next time that you bring your hips over to the left, pause there, press them into your hands, begin to scoop your hips towards your heels. You're coming back towards the child's pose and then shift your hips over to the right, gazes over your left shoulder. Okay. Begin to shift your hips back, gaze comes forward, hips to heels, and then send your hips over to the left, gaze to the right. So you're creating little half circles with the hips. You can choose whatever depth you'd like here, but just to begin to create some fluidity in some of those sticky areas. Don't worry if it feels like your body doesn't quite want to move through. You don't have to come to a huge depth. Just begin to shift through. And so it's not about going as far as possible, but about beginning to find some fluidity, some grace. Okay, let's take one more movement to each side. And then 
then when you come all the way back through to center, shift forward so your shoulders come over top of your fingertips. And then as you exhale, lower all the way down towards your belly. You cradle your right cheek into your right hand, bend into your left knee, reach your left hand back. Finding some active lengthening. As you inhale, begin to kick your foot into your hand, hand into your foot. Your knee might lift or your heel might lift away from your tailbone. And then as you exhale, just soften and let that go. And let's take two more just like that. So inhale to feel a little bit of resistance and then exhale uh, to melt into your mat. One more breath just like that. Inhale, kick into your hand, hand presses into your foot and exhale to release. Allow the top of your left foot to float down onto your mat. Other side, cradle your head or cheek into your left arm. Pick up your right toes, right heel towards your tailbone. And then once again, just begin to find an inhale of active lengthening as you resist, and an exhale of ease as you just soften. Okay, so some of you might take really big movements. As you inhale, you might kick your foot into your hand and lift up. And as you exhale, you might come back down. Or you might just stay here and feel that resistance. And then let go of it. Gently, you can release the top of your foot to come all the way down onto your mat. Take both hands underneath your forehead and just gently rock your hips side to side. So you're feeling your hip bones massage against the ground, maybe allowing the low back to release. And then bring your hands underneath your shoulders, come back to stillness of the spine. As you press into your hands, lift away from the earth, send your hips back to your heels, child's pose. Take a full breath in and a long exhale breath out. As you inhale, begin to peel yourself away from your mat. Come back to tabletop, so we're stacking our bones, shoulders over top of your wrists, hips over top of your knees. All right, spread your fingertips wide so that you feel stable. And then begin to pick up your right knee, keeping flexed into the heel. Okay. Draw your right knee out towards the right side of the room, and then draw your knee forward in towards your chest. Sweep your right knee beside your left. Pick your right knee back up, and then off to the sides. So you're creating really big circles with the right hip. Okay. The rest of the body is stable, so we have a tendency here where we'd want to kick the left hip out to the side to help balance. Try to engage the muscles of the lateral line. Squeeze into those glutes so your left hip stays above your knee. All right, we've been here for a while. Next time that you come up through center, switch directions. Okay, if you are shaking like me, totally acceptable. This is not meant to be easy. Isolations are really challenging because we're asking those bigger muscles that we normally rely on to pause so we get into those stabilizers, those little bit smaller muscles that we often neglect in lieu of the bigger ones. All right, the next time that you come up through center, cross your right knee over top of the left so your inner thighs are glued together, and then slide your right toes back, tucking the toes so that your knee is lifted. Give your wrists a little bit of a break. So you're gonna lower onto forearms. Kick your left hip out to the side. Now, if you're looking for a little bit more, you can actually walk your hands over to the right side. So you're essentially creating this banana asana shape through the body. And you're gonna get this nice juicy opening through the lateral line of the left side. Okay, wherever you are, soften into your shoulders. See if you can find a couple of deep breaths. So really filling up all the way into the depths of your lung. And then letting that go, emptying out completely. Let's take one more full inhale. And long exhale. Walk your hands back through center. Hands on underneath your shoulders. Slide your right toes back so that they line up with your right hip. Now begin to walk your hands to the long edge of your mat over to the right. 
You're gonna turn and pivot onto your right toes. You're coming to a half child's pose. So left toes begin to point to the long edge of the mat back behind you. Shift your right foot out to the side so that you're going to take your left hip onto your left heel. Okay. Now some of you might be still up onto your hands. Some of you can land down onto forearms. You might take your arms out in front. Your hip might be right on the heel or it actually might be quite lifted. So as long as you're feeling this in the inner thigh, know that you can always turn up your right toes if you need um, a little bit of a shift in the shape to support your knee. Notice where the lengthening is happening within your body. And you just hold space to move through that. So you don't have to fix it, you don't have to change anything, just to simply breathe for a moment. If you are down on forearms, walk yourself back up onto your hands, lifting your hips away from your heel, and then slowly lower yourself to a half butterfly. So the sole of your left foot will come to the inside of your right thigh, right toes point up to the ceiling, facing the long edge of your mat. You take a gentle twist, inhale, breath, reach your fingertips up, gaze might follow. As you exhale, twist towards your left thigh so that your right hand will land onto your left knee and left fingertips reach back. So really, really tall through the spine. All right, adding onto this, keep your right hand as it is. So right hand binding for you to hold you stable. Untwist your body, so shoulders now square to the front. Inhale, left fingertips reach up. And as you exhale, reach your left fingertips over towards your extended leg. So try to keep the shoulders square. So you're working to that lateral line of the left side. Once again, if you are folding a little bit more, we're actually gonna come into this variation later. So try to almost have your left shoulder stacked over top of your right. All right, we're gonna move through this. So instead of using momentum, can you use the muscles of your lateral line of your core as you inhale, lift yourself all the way up. As you exhale, plant your left hand beside your hip, even slightly behind you, lift up onto your left shin, and then sweep your right fingertips over towards the short edge of your mat, squeeze into your glutes. I like to call this one rock star. If you want a little bit more, think about pressing your hips forward, almost like you're tucking your tailbone underneath you, maybe even reaching your right fingertips back. All right. Let's gently begin to come all the way onto our seat. Right hand lands onto your left knee. Inhale, reach left fingertips up. Exhale, pour over. Inhale, breath, lift up. Exhale, plant your hands. Inhale to press into the earth, rock star, reach over. Exhale to lower back down. Inhale to lift up and exhale to pour over. So really work into those lateral lines. Inhale to lift up. Exhale to set up. One more time. Inhale, reach over, squeeze the glutes, send your hips forward. And then exhale to lower back down. Right hand stays down. Left fingertips reach all the way up and over. All right, inhale, breath, lift up. Release your left hand down. Turn and pivot. So now shoulders are square towards your lengthened leg. If you need extra props, you can always take them underneath your left knee if it feels like it's pulling at all. Okay, inhale breath, reach your fingertips all the way up. And then as you exhale, hinge with a flat spine, reaching as far as you can, and then begin to fold. As you inhale, halfway lift and lengthen, reach the crown of your head forward. And then as you exhale, fold. Okay, let's take two more breaths just like that. Inhale breath to halfway lift and lengthen. And exhale to fold. Last one, inhale breath, halfway lift. And exhale to fold. Walk your hands back in towards your body. Okay, turn over your left hip. So you're gonna come back into rock star. Press into your left hand, up onto the left shin, right fingertips reach over. And begin to take your right hand down. Turning onto your right toes, set up for three-legged dog. Press into all 10 fingertips, float your left heel up towards the ceiling. 
Bend into your left knee, stack into your hips. Peel your side body open. Okay? And then as you exhale, take your left knee to your nose and softly plant your left foot between your hands. Drop your back knee down. We're gonna move it through monkey lunge and half splits. So you can always keep your hands down or onto your blocks, or you can take your hands up. So we're gonna take five breaths of movement. As you inhale, press into your front foot, shift some weight back in your lunge. As you exhale, release your hands down, straighten out your front leg, turn your left toes up to the ceiling, and think about folding over that front leg. As you inhale, shift forward, press into the earth to rise, whether hands lift or just upper body, and then exhale to hinge at the hips, draw your heart close towards your knee. And so just continue to move through this. Inhales bring you into that expansion and opening, and exhales bring you into a soft gathering back to self. All right, one more breath just like that. Inhale, breath to lift up, and then exhale to come all the way back. All right, bend into your front knee, low runner's lunge. Tuck your back toes to lift your back knee. A little bit different. Roll to the pinky side edge of both feet and drop your right hip down. So you might feel this into your left hip, coming into a bit of external rotation. Make sure there's no pulling on your left knee. If there is, you can always come back up onto a solid foot, still dropping the right hip in a little bit of a twist. Okay. Pick up your right hip as you press into the earth. Turn onto your back toes, back into that low runner's lunge. Inhale, breath, draw your left toes all the way up. Bend into your left knee, stack into your hips. Exhale, take your left knee to your left wrist, left ankle to the right side of your mat, pigeon. Okay, don't worry, we're not staying here for a long time, just three breaths. Untuck your back toes. Walk your hands up so that they're maybe even beside your hips. Shoulders stacking over top of your hips. It's gonna get you more into the hip flexor of your back leg and quads than when we fold. So I just want you to feel into the sensations as you move the upper body. Okay, so take a big breath in. Think about growing tall through the spine. As you exhale, fold, belly, then heart, then head. Okay. Inhale, breath to peel away from the earth. Gaze might even come up. And then exhale, fold, belly, heart, then head. Okay, one more time, inhale, breath to lift all the way up. And then exhale to fold all the way down. All right, a little bit of a different transition. You can bring your hands out in front of you. We're meeting into window leaving pose. Left knee will be in towards your chest. So you're gonna slowly roll yourself over to your left hip. Right leg can stay straight. Roll yourself onto your back. Interlace your hands on top of your left shin and then guide your left knee more towards your left armpit and the side of your rib cage. You really press through your right heel as though you're trying to push it away from the body. And then we're gonna add in just a little bit of movement and take your left shin into your left hand. On your inhale breath, open out to the side. So your left knee's coming closer towards the left side of your mat. As you inhale, actually come back up through center. And then exhale, switch hands. Right hand to the outer edge of your left thigh. Twist. Okay. So inhales are gonna bring you back up through center. And exhales to open up closer to the earth. Inhale to lift up through center. Use your hand to support your leg. And then exhale, left hip lifts as you twist over to the right. Let's take one more to each side. Finding the flow of your breath really, really slow, really, really gentle. Okay. Come all the way back up through center. Take your left knee into your chest. Draw your right knee in towards your chest and just give yourself a gentle hug. Okay, now if rocking and rolling up and down the length of your spine doesn't feel good for your body, you can roll to either side. And then you'll knee into a tabletop. Don't worry if you're facing the opposite way than you started. You should be facing the back of your mat. Okay, so you'll rock and roll up and down the length of your spine a couple more times. 
and then once you take that final rock crossing over your ankles and you'll meet into tabletop. Okay, once again, you can shift hips side to side as we found earlier. You could take a couple of cat cows if that feels nice for the spine. Maybe even add in some movement of head or neck. All right, let's find our, ooh, there we go, hip circles. Again, so spread your fingertips out wide. You can even walk your hands one hand front forward if this is a lot for your wrists. Optional, tuck the right toes if you need more stability. Begin to pick up your left knee to hip height. Draw your left knee out to the side of the room. Draw your left knee in towards your chest. Sweep it beside your right. Okay, let's take a few more circles in this direction. Remembering to not allow the right hip to go way out to the side. That right hip scoops up and stacks over top of your knee. So the muscles in your right glutes are working really, really hard to stabilize you so that it's just the femur, the upper thigh bone, moving in the hip girdle or the socket of the hip. Okay, the next time that you come up through center, let's switch directions. I know this is a lot, but I'm also right here with you. Okay, notice if you're holding your breath or if there's anywhere that you're resisting or gripping. Uh, can you just soften into that? Let a little bit more movement flow, whether it's breath or physical movement or even just softness. Okay, the next time that your knee comes up through center, you'll cross your left knee over top of your right. Should feel a little bit of release. Okay, slide your left toes to the back right corner of your mat, and this is where you can begin to tuck the toes and lift the knee. Kick your right hip out to the side, so it should feel pretty nice as a release from all of the work your right hip was just doing. And then lower onto your forearms. You can keep your upper body facing forward. If you're looking for a little bit more, walk yourself towards the left side of your mat so that you're getting this lateral line of the body, not just into the hip, but also into all of those connecting muscles up through the core, the obliques. Okay, wherever you've chosen to land, try to just soften. Whether you're letting your head hang heavy or it rests onto the earth or a prop. Walk your hands back up and towards your body. So your hands are gonna come back through center. Okay. Turn and pivot yourself to the left side of your mat. So your right toes are gonna point to the long edge of the mat behind you, off at an angle like you would in child's pose, and your left foot is extended off to the side. As you sit back, right hip comes onto your right heel, left leg continues to slide out further. Always, always, always optional to turn your left toes up if that's better for your knee. Just make sure there's no pulling of the knee or hyperextension, that there's a little bit of softness to that joint. And then allow yourself just to land within the pose. So I think really often we're looking to get to that next pose, but sometimes this practice becomes a checklist of boxes that we need to mark off. And so I encourage you to just be in this moment and explore what it is to kind of be here, to move, to shift, to explore. You can take as long as you need to meet when we're moving into those next few poses. So if you are all the way down, you'll begin to walk your hands up so that you can sit yourself onto your seat with the sole of your right foot to the inside of your left leg. You take a gentle twist to bring out the spine. So as you inhale, reach your fingertips up. As you exhale, twist over your right hip. So left hand onto your right knee, right fingertips walk back. Think about growing tall through the spine. Notice the grip that you have with your left hand. You're gonna hold that grip. And then as you exhale, unwind the spine so that your shoulders now square to the long edge of your mat. Inhale, breath, reach your right fingertips up. And as you exhale, begin to pour over towards your extended leg. So your left hand here is actually holding you up. So instead of having to use the obliques to keep you here, you can actually soften into them, just allow them to really naturally lengthen. So there's a little bit of effort on the left side that's being contracted with that left arm that's holding you here. 
All right, let's move into rock star. As you inhale, lift up through center, right hand plants beside or slightly behind your right hip. Come up onto your right shin, reach your left fingertips over towards the back of your mat. And then as you exhale, lower yourself onto your seat. Sorry, that'd be the front of your mat. Inhale, reach right hand up and then over. Okay, so you're just gonna continue to move through this. On your inhales, right hand plants, you come into your rock star, so the expansiveness of the inhale. Exhale brings you closer towards the earth. And then inhale gives you that length and lift, and exhale pours you over soft. Okay, let's take a couple more breaths just like that. So you're moving between rock star variation and your half butterfly with a little bit of a different variation in the arms. Okay, let's take one more breath just like that. So hopefully feeling a little bit less sticky into hips and even into just the lateral line of the body. Okay, let's come back up through center. Release your hands. Turn and twist now so that you're facing your extended leg over towards your left toes. As you inhale, reach your fingertips all the way up. Gaze might follow. As you exhale, hinge and fold, draping your body when you can't fold anymore. And now you can always take those little lifts to lengthen and exhales to fold. If you just want to tuck your chin in towards your chest, you can always, always, always use props to support you. If you want to feel a little bit more grounded or it feels like a lot to just hold here. And then walk your hands back up and towards your body. So you're coming back onto your seat. Rockstar just as a transition, right hand plants. Reach your left fingertips over and then begin to rotate your rib cage towards the ground. So your left hand plants, you turn onto your left toes, three-legged dog. Draw your right toes up and back. Bend into your right knee, stack into your hips, peeling your side body open. As you exhale, step your right foot between your hands, drop your back knee down, flowing through monkey lunge and half splits. Inhale, breaths bring you into your monkey lunge. Exhales take you to your half splits where you can fold and round. Inhales, think about opening up through the heart, hands can stay rooted or can lift up. And exhales will bring you into length of the back of the body. Take three more breaths just like that. Whatever variation you so choose to take. Now you're just moving through this really, really slowly. So you're actually gonna work into those stabilizing muscles rather than the muscles that we tend to overuse anyways. Okay, so the stabilizers are moving you through these tiny, tiny shifts. Okay, last breath just like that. When you meet into your lunge, walk your hands forward to frame your front foot, tuck your back toes to lift your knee, and then roll to the pinky side edges of both feet. We're just here for a second, left hip drops down, should feel nice release for the right hip. Okay. On your inhale, you'll lift back up through center, turn your toes to the front, setting up for a three-legged dog. Inhale, breath, sweep your right foot up and back. Exhale, half pigeon. Right knee to your right wrist, right ankle to the left side of your mat. Drop your back knee, untuck your back toes. All right, we have three breaths. So walk your hands up and towards your hips. Grow tall through the spine as you inhale. Exhale, fold belly, then heart, then head. Inhale, breath, lift away from the earth like a wave. And then exhale to fold. One more breath, just like that. Inhale to lift up and lengthen. And then exhale to fold all the way down. Okay, making your way to winter leaving pose on your right side. Begin to roll yourself over your right hip so that you land onto your back. Take your right knee in towards your chest. Draw your right knee more to the side of your rib cage. Softness through the fingertips, you don't have to white knuckle grip this, and then think about pressing your left foot towards the short edge of your mat. Okay. When you're ready, you can start to invite in movement, right hand clasps your right shin, 
As you inhale, open your knee out towards the side. As you inhale, lift right knee back up through center. And then exhale, twist. Left hand helps to guide across. Right hip lifts up. And just moving side to side. Inhale through center. Exhale, open out to the right. Feeling and lengthening through the inner thigh. And then inhale, hand presses up through center. And exhale over to the left. Let's just take one more breath just like that. Inhale up through center and off to the side. And come all the way back up. And exhale to twist. All right. So next time you come up through center, take your left knee in as well. You can give yourself a gentle squeeze. Maybe a rock side to side. And begin to rock and roll up and down the length of your spine. So once again, we're going to meet into a tabletop and you're welcome to find any movements that just feel good so that might be hips to the left and to the right that could be a couple of cat cows we're setting up for that fun activity that i was talking about earlier okay so bear with me this might take a little bit of shuffling around blocks or you're wrapping books up or a thick book up in a blanket if you didn't have any blocks prepared, just simply roll up your yoga mat. So you're actually gonna, yes, get up of your yoga mat, roll it up so it's in a cylinder. Okay. From your tabletop, take your yoga mat so that it comes in front of your knees or your block or prop. And then walk your hands forward. So you're gonna land onto forearms and then slowly lower yourself so that your left shin, or sorry, left quad is gonna be on the prop, and then you're gonna take a half frog position with the right leg. So your right knee will bend, inner thigh towards the ground, and then your left quadricep, or upper thigh, is going to be on the prop. Okay, it's gonna feel a little bit weird. What I want you to do is begin to pick up your left heel, draw it in towards your tailbone, bending the knee, and then just begin to slowly, slowly, slowly straighten that out. Okay, you might need to move this around a little bit. So start, actually let's start with your prop just above the knee. So not actually on the knee. You don't want the prop on the kneecap, PSA. Make sure it's just above and then you're gonna do this movement and we're gonna move up the length of your quad. So this is a little bit of fascia release. So just continuing to move heel in towards body. Notice if you are gripping with your fingertips or with your face. <laughs> I know that this isn't always easy. Okay. Make sure that you get the inside of the thigh as well. Sometimes that can be really tight. And then you also move a little bit more towards the outside. Okay. This is gonna be uncomfortable, but make sure that's not painful. If it's painful, add an extra layer or try to find something softer. Maybe try your yoga mat. We're gonna to start to move up. So the next time that you drop your foot down, tuck your toes, shift yourself so that your prop is about to your mid thigh. Okay, and then once again, just begin to move through this. Ooh, this one's getting a little bit spicy for me. <laughs> um, this is very, very similar to rolling. So sometimes it's not so much the muscles that are tight, it's actually the connective tissue around. And so we really need to begin to break up that buildup of fascia that's causing us to be sticky, especially if we've been doing a lot of running or biking lately to stay active and our body isn't used to it and we're not stretching after. Okay, let's take one more movement here and then we're gonna move up last little bit closest towards the hip flexor or crease of your hips. Again, make sure you're not actually on the joint you're slightly below. And then again, play with going to the right and to the left of this. If you want to stay somewhere, you're always welcome to just hold there, feel into that. Otherwise, continuing to shear the muscles of the quads. And then the next time that your toes come down, come back up onto your hands, lift yourself back to a tabletop. So your right knee is going to come underneath you, left knee is going to come there. 
the side. Take your big toes together. Set your hips back onto your heels. Okay, walk your hands back. And you can just lean. You might notice a difference between the left and the right side. Okay, the best part about this is we, best and worst part, we have the other side, yay. Okay, so once again, you're gonna set up your prop. So whether you want to use your yoga mat, you're using a peanut butter jar, take that prop so that it's underneath your thigh and you want it closer towards the knee. So closer towards the bottom of the thigh. And then again, just gonna begin to move your heel in and out. Uh oh, I've done to my peanut butter jar. <laughs> Okay, so you really want to work into this area of the, I know, Jen, I'm so sorry, um, killing you. Okay, good. Um, for those of you that I'm getting all of these messages right now about how much you're hating this, <laughs> um, I have a joke to lighten the mood. Okay, it's one of my favorites. I hope you haven't heard it before, but if you have, I hope you still appreciate it. What do you call it when Batman skips church? Okay, let's see if any of you find the answer to this. I'll give you five more seconds. <laughs> and then once we come with the answer, we're gonna move up to the inner thigh. All right, the next time that your toes come down, lift the knee so that you can shift yourself. So now your inner thigh, or your not inner thigh, your mid thigh is on the prop. And begin to move again. All right, the answer to that will be when Batman skip church, it's called Christian Bale. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go back and look and see who got that. <laughs> okay, you guys, you're already more than halfway through. You're already at the midpoint. Make sure that you're going to the left and the right sides. You're getting the inner thigh, the outer thigh. Um, I was gonna suggest you do this with a wine bottle, but I'm always so afraid that <laughs> we're gonna smash the wine bottle and end up with some serious injuries. So. Um, you can do this anytime at home. Just make sure that you're, you know, listening to your body. Um, I don't know if any of you will actually do this at home, so I'm gonna do it in classes for you so that you'll actually join me. Okay, let's go a little bit further up one more time. Lift yourself away from the blocks. So now you're coming up towards the hip flexor, towards the crease of the hips, and once again, moving heel in. You know, it actually can get worse if you start to take your heel side to side. So you're actually getting it pretty easy this time, um, just having to move the heel in and out. But if you do want to play with that, that one can be pretty juicy as well. All right, you guys, we are almost done this side. Let's take two more breaths. And then you'll release your toes back down, come up onto your hands, pick up yourself so you can meet back into tabletop. We are done with rolling for the day. Yay, have your own at home celebration. Okay, you can shift side to side if you need, but what's really fun is we're coming into heroes. Okay, so that's why we were rolling, is to get ready for this. So heroes pose, start with your big toes together for a moment and knees together. And then you're gonna separate out your feet so your heels go towards the edges of the mat and then you're gonna set your hips back between your heels. Okay, now if this doesn't feel good, you can always take a pillow or a prop to sit on. And then you're gonna play with leaning back. So you can walk your hands back. Some of you might be able to come onto your forearms. Some of you might lie all the way down. You know, just make sure if you are lying down, knees are lifting. If knees are lifting, it means that the muscles of your upper thighs or of your thighs in general, your quadriceps, aren't able to lengthen enough to bring you down and it's actually pulling on the knees. So we want to avoid that. Those of you that are like, Lauren, this absolutely does not work for me. You can always try saddle. So big toes to touch, knees slightly wider, hips onto your heels. So a little bit more similar to a child's pose, and then you can play with leaning back there too. All right, my quads are mega tight, so I'm right here with you guys, so you're not on your own. Okay, we're gonna stay for a little bit longer, but I promise you it's not gonna be that long. So maybe just about eight or so breaths. Okay. So 
see if you can find the sound of your breath. So especially if you haven't in a while, I find when these poses get really intense that hearing your breath becomes a really grounding force. And hopefully with doing all of that quad opening from before that you have a little bit more space uh, to actually just sink into this. All right, now those of you who really, really love this shape, you are so welcome to stay if you're just getting into that release. Those of you that have already been plotting a million ways to escape this, the good news is we are gonna come out, but try not to spring out of it. So take your time coming up onto your forearms and then your hands. And you're gonna walk your hands forward so you come back towards a tabletop. My favorite of coming out of heroes is down dog. So if you also like that, you can tuck your toes, lift your hips up and back. Actually, this is the is this a this is the first full down dog we've taken today. So you can always pedal out your feet, bend it into one knee at a time. You can lift up your heels or drop them. Should just feel nice to lengthen the back body that was just being compressed. All right. Whether you're in tabletop or down dog, we're gonna make our way onto our seats. So down dog, slowly lowering your knees, and from tabletop, you'll take your feet off to the sides. Okay, facing towards front or back of your mat, just making sure you have support. Seated forward fold, shift your hips side to side to take out the soft bits. I have a little bit more than usual, <laughs> too many, many eggs. Okay, toes point up towards the ceiling. As you inhale, reach your fingertips all the way up. And as you exhale, hinge and fold forward, draping your body over top of your shin. Inhale, breath halfway lift and lengthen. Exhale to fold. Let's take two more breaths just like that. Inhale, breath to lengthen. And exhale to fold. Last one. Inhale, breath halfway lift and exhale, let that go. Walk your hands back up in towards your body. So you're gonna stack your shoulders over top of your hips. Shift your feet over to the right side of your mat. So you come onto your left hip, almost like a mermaid perching on a rock. <laughs> it's my dream. Um, you can begin to draw your right knee off to the side. So right knee towards the long edge of your mat, or really just making sure that you have, it's about a 90 degree angle or a square with your legs, but you can always draw your right knee in a little closer if you need. Okay. Deer pose, keep a soft flex, especially into your front foot, and then begin to fold over top of your left shin. What's really beautiful about deer is you're not limited to being perfectly square like we were in pigeon, so you can actually fold a little bit more off to the side if you'd like, over to the left, we will take the quad opening variation after. So you are welcome to take that, but know that we're coming into it. All right, amazing. <laughs> yes, you guys, holy smokes, Batman, for my dream. Yes, Tara, my dream ever since I was, I don't even know, in the womb was to become a mermaid. <laughs> Actually for my bachelorette party this year, we did a little mermaid theme and everyone had to go as sea creatures, and it was maybe my most favorite moment with all of my friends. <laughs> all right, well, let's begin to shift out of this. So you can begin to walk your hands up in towards your body. All right, this is the fun one. So once again, going into the quads, not as much as deer. Lean at about a 45 degree angle from your front foot. So you're gonna lean over to the back left corner of your mat. So you might land up onto a hand, or onto a forearm. I always feel like this is some backstreet boys pose. I hear falling, kind of leaning into it. You should feel this into your right quadricep, maybe even hip flexor. You might even feel this a little bit into the inner thigh. So wherever you feel this, yeah, if you want to make this even more sexy, <laughs> you can take your right hand to the base of your skull. Take a couple of deep breaths. Feeling into that sensation, but not having to change or fix it. All right, last little hip opener for this side 
walk your hands along the edge of your mat, along your left thigh, so you're coming towards the front. Now you might be leaning forward, so begin to shift your shoulders over top of your hips. Slide your back knee around in front, so right knee comes forward. We're working to double pigeon. Right ankle over top of your left knee, right knee over top of your left ankle. So your, stin, sh your shins are essentially stacked like I am genie arms. Now if this pulls on your knees, you can always take your shins so that they're one in front of another, similar to when you come into cross-legged, but your legs aren't actually gonna be crossed. So you're gonna draw your right foot more over to the left side. You can also take a block if you have a really big space or a pillow to support your right knee. Um, final option, if none of these feel good for your knee joints, I know knees can be a little sticky, you can always come into a seated figure four. So left foot plants, right ankle is crossed, and you're in seated. I think those of you that are in the um, double pigeon variations, you can also play with hinging forward and folding over top of your body. You try to draw your hip bones or your sits bones towards the ground, so they're gonna wanna lift when you hinge. So as you draw more weight back, you're gonna get that length all the way down through the low back and into the close into your eyes you're not here for too long I uh, I would offer you guys more jokes but I'm actually really terrible at jokes that's basically the one I have in my repertoire um, so you're just gonna have to uh, allow yourself to be here and be with your breath and I will work on more for you next time <laughs> Again, if you need to stay a little bit longer, you are so, 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 so welcome to. Um, otherwise, you can slowly start to come back up through center. Untangle your legs, walk your feet out wide, hands walk back, and then you can just gently drop your knees to the right and over to the left. Wash that out, rinse that out. We're gonna find the other side of deer. So when you're ready, you got it, mermaid sit over to the right hand side. You can even flutter your feet if you want. <laughs> the left knee will draw back. Okay, weight is on your front hip, so your back hip is actually lifted here. And then when you're ready, you're just gonna begin to fold forward. So whether that's more over top of the ankle, the shin, or the knee, just make sure that your knees feel supported. So you can always draw your left knee in closer or further back. There really is no right or wrong. I find with a lot of hips poses, it's just about making sure that your body feels supported, that you're not pulling or injuring the joints, and that you're able to feel into that sensation without that gripping. So sometimes we think, okay, sometimes, let's be real. Most of us all the time think that more is better, and I think that's shifting right now, that less can actually be more. But often in the practice, we feel that edge, and we're like, oh, I can push it, I can do more. What I suggest is just take it back a little bit. Allow the depth or the more to actually be in breath, in presence. So it's not about having to physically get into a deeper pose, but perhaps the going into the deeper breath, going into what it really is to be in this moment, to feel connected, uh, of just allowing yourself to explore rather than trying to get somewhere of allowing yourself to enjoy the journey along the way. Okay. Once again, walk your hands back up in towards your body. Okay, pick your favorite boy band, girl band pose as you lean over to the back right corner. So you're gonna feel that lengthening into your left quadricep or hip flexor. You can always turn your shoulders either more towards the mat or you can open your shoulders up a little bit more. So you can choose, if it felt good to have left hand behind your head, elbow reaching up to the ceiling or even over towards the side of your mat. That's also a really nice variation. Okay, just make sure that where you are, shoulders drawing down from the ears. They can be soft through the head, neck and face. Maybe even close into your eyes. Let your body rest a little bit heavier. If you want more sensation, you can always squeeze into your left glute like you're pulling your left hip bone or hip flexor forward. Okay. 
All right, you guys, we made it to the last pose of this. Walk your hands along the edge of your mat, along your right thigh. Shift your shoulders so they come over top of your hips. Left knee draws around and in front, so you're either stacking your shins. You can come into a seated figure four with your right foot planted, left ankle crossed, heart drawing in towards your shin, or you can always take just left shin in front of right. If you are in the variation of half pigeon, you are so welcome to fold, or you can stay upright and just try to draw your sits bones into the ground. Okay, so finding the sensation that best serves you so that you just get this opportunity to be here. It's been a really, really big treat getting to connect with all of you guys, um, despite the chaos and uncertainty of right now that we still get to practice together. And so just a huge shout out to all of you guys for joining me. Oh, nacho joke, so good. Um, it's It's truly been really wonderful and I hope that you are able to take this moment for yourself. So to really just be here, you're with me, you're surrounded by so many friends. Um, yeah. Okay. So those of you that have folded or hinged, you're just gonna slowly come all the way back up. Okay. When you're ready, you'll untangle your legs, walk your feet out wide, and once again, drop your knees to the left and to the right. Let's come all the way down onto our back. So when you're ready, we begin to lower down. Let's take a nice giant stretch. So we've done a lot of work into lengthening. So really just expanding into all that length that you've created as you inhale. And then as you exhale, you can just soften into place. Let's take one more breath just like that. Inhale to lengthen. And exhale to soften. Okay. This next pose that we're coming to close off with, you can use props or pillows. Plant your feet onto your mat. Pick up your hips enough that you can take a pillow or a block underneath your sacrum. So lower back, but not the vertebra. So the fuse bones of the spine underneath. And then one at a time, you can take your knees into your chest and then extend your feet up towards the ceiling for a supported waterfall. You can always add in the arms for a dead bug. I'm just gonna use the shape to kind of clear out any remaining stickiness of the legs. You could always roll the ankles or wrists a couple of times. Um, this is really wonderful for just resetting the lymphatic system when we're on our feet or sitting all day, uh, our lymph fluid will actually drain towards the ground and we don't have those pumps and valves like we do in the circulatory system to move lymph fluid around. So to come into an inversion is just really wonderful. Also inversions are known to be uh, energizing in nature, taking head below the heart um, really just getting a different perspective. So however your day started, that you have permission to change that, that you still have permission to have a really beautiful rest of your day, even if the start was a little bit wonky or a little bit, maybe not what you expected, okay? If you want to take a little bit more opening into the low back, you can always play with beginning to draw your toes towards the wall behind you or over top of your face. You can always take a soft bend into your knees. So you're just gonna get that deeper curvature of the spine. Those of you that want to play with plow can take your hands down beside you and begin to lift your hips away from your block or prop. And then you can always take your hands to your low back to support. Hey, make sure if you are in plow, take the block out. So just in case you do come down that you don't roll onto it. Okay, try to make sure gaze is gonna come up to the ceiling. So don't have your gaze to the left and to the right so you're not cranking into the neck if you are in this variation. Okay. Stay as long as you need. If you wanna take a little bit longer, you want to play with shoulder stand and taking your feet up towards the ceiling, you're welcome to play with that inversion. And we're just gonna be into Shavasana. So when you're ready, coming out of plow, think about rolling down your spine one vertebra at a time. 
Okay, make sure if you do still have that block there, it's really, really slow and you're placing yourself on the block, you're not slamming down. Okay, knees will once again bend into your chest and then you can place the soles of your feet down. If you still have a block underneath you, lift your hips up, slide your block off to the side. Okay, and then she'll wipe your knees a couple of times to the left and to the right. If you want to add in any other poses, you want to take twists for a couple breaths to either side, that might feel nice. And then when you're ready, you're just going to extend out to your final Shavasana. Hands can come down beside you. You might rock your head once or twice just to settle heavy into your bones. Once you've landed in your Shavasana, just give yourself this space to be. The hip chakra is related to our right to feel. And not just to feel the good things or the exciting things or the easy things, it's our right to feel into the dark corners. It's our right to feel whatever that moment offers us. Okay. And to just navigate this breath by breath. Today, as we practice, I felt a lot of joy, um, some fun, some laughter, some curiosity, um, a whole lot of gratitude. I think it's just really important that we honor how we're feeling in these moments and to remember what that is to, you know, be in the lightness, to be in the joy, um, to also be in the sadness and a little bit of the anxiety and to know that that's how you're feeling and whatever it is that we just breathe through it. Okay? So continue to just take some really deep breaths here. Give yourself as much time as you need to come out of Shavasana, especially if you don't have anywhere to go after this, that you, um, you have all the time, so don't feel like you have to rush it. You don't have to get anywhere. Just let yourself feel. Let yourself be. And I'm not going to give you a time limit to come out of Shavasana, um, just so that you get to do this on your own time and slowly wake up your body. So much love. Thank you for playing in your practice with me. Thank you for laughing at my terrible joke. Um, for just being you and for all the support that you guys have reached out to me and Hot Shop and other teachers. Um, huge shout out to our frontline staff, whether it's at grocery stores or nurses or doctors or respiratory therapists. We even have some of those. Um, careers on our yoga team right now. So thank you for all you are doing. We are all so, so, so grateful. Okay. I love you all from the bottom of my heart. Namaste. Okay, you guys, you're so welcome. rad pizza joke if you guys want to see Tara's pizza joke it's in the comments so definitely have fun with that <laughs> okay you're so welcome Jen it was so nice to have you <laughs> hey Jill good to see you like twice in not quite 24 hours 30 hours. <laughs> You're welcome, Kelsey. Hi, Elena. Aw, Kayla. You guys, this is so wonderful. I hope you have such a good rest of your weekend. Actually, if any of you are interested, Megs and I are going to do, it's probably going to be more entertainment than anything, um, handstand and inversion play later today. So <laughs> feel free to uh, watch the circus that that might be. <laughs> Okay. Mm. Aw, thanks, Tara. Love you. Hey, Leah. Okay. 
I will see you all soon. Keep an eyes peeled on the um, on the stories and stuff for uh, schedule. Okay, bye you guys.